Yes, Keldor, it is. Let's go ahead and go to the batter count for game number two. Keldor's a bully today. Cursed Hollow, Fnatic picking it. Why am I a bully? It was, it was an honest question. Uh, okay, all right. Diablo looks like a frog with that green thing. If he rides a cloud, is he a cloud frog? Okay, you're right. Maybe I misread the situation. We're going to Cursed Hollow. I'm making fun of you. I just think the idea is awesome. A cloud frog. I like cloud frogs, too. I'm a fan yeah. of them. Me They're great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> Curse Hollow, Fnatic picks it up, so we're going to be seeing some globals. I, I'm feeling dizzy. I generally thought it was funny. You're I was not making dizzy? fun of it. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> I think it's an awesome name. Anyways. <laughs> Who gets dizzy when they're nervous? Is that like a... Huh? Uh, you get dizzy when you're nervous? No, I feel dizzed. Oh. Not dizzy. Oh. Is that a German word? Is that just us just completely taking English word and taking it fully out of context and throwing it in? I think so. Yeah, probably. It's okay, though. I like Dizzy, though. You're hurting my feelings. This is what I'm trying to say here. I think you're a beautiful and, and bald yes, man. And yes, I have feelings. <laughs> <laughs> At least I'm told so. My mother, my mother tells me I'm special. So, Genji, banned out. We are on Curse Tolo. Fnatic is in the lead. And this is this is actually a map where I'm even more afraid for the Ducks than anything else. Because on Tomb of Spider Queen, there's a lot of momentum that you can build up. If you get a uh, team fight victory, you can get a turn in, maybe a boss, and then it's very hard for your opponent to stop you. But Cursed Hollow is one of those really just staple and very traditional, very standard maps where you have plays around the double boss, around, of course, the objective itself. But team fighting here can be really powerful and also Globals and Fnatic, they are the master of Globals. Execution also very important. Shot calling too, with Curse Hall being so figured out, as you were mentioning, there are scenarios where you have to make the bold claim or the bold play in certain moments. And if that doesn't come through from the playing Ducks, they could have a rough time against Fnatic, because Fnatic can do well on this battleground. They've shown it multiple times. Now Tassadar gets picked up for the Ducks, as Tass is really becoming a mainstay here at the ACC. Yeah. I'm really hyped for that Tassadar. Uh, He's your favorite hero, isn't he? Oh, Tassadar is fantastic. He's awesome. I really like him. I believe you. Okay, Fnatic, do you make the play here in for, in for the double global? They go Dahaka, they go Brightwing. The answer is yes. All right, Brightwing and Dahaka once again. The one thing that surprises me more about this than anything else is the low priority that they currently assign Utha. That's insane. Fnatic's over it, man. They don't want to play the bearded guy anymore. Everyone else plays it. I mean, Utha has still the highest participation ratio in uh, Phase 2 of HEC. He's the only hero that has 100%. But I can get why... Fnatic is the global team. Them picking Brightwing is, for me, absolutely okay. Whereas with any other team, when they pick Brightwing as a solo heal, I would have said, like, oh, are you really sure about that? But in this case, now Fnatic just knows how to execute those perfectly. I'm really distracted by our camera, by the way. I'm not quite sure what exactly is happening here. <laughs> Did you They're see that? some new moves, man. He went to, he went to camera camp last week. The camera camp. Yeah, that's what he did. <laughs> I heard the same guys are also running horse camp. Yeah. <laughs> that Benny told me about that. It's a new thing, man. If you want to yeah. get good at something, you go to camp. Vala right, and stitches. Wow, I thought I would see the Vala and the Uther here, but they go Vala stitches instead. What happened to Uther? He's done, man. He's over. This series has decided that. Uther is no, 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 no longer no, no. viable. We're definitely going to see Uther. Question is just which spot. Ban life. This would be the first game in uh, since the midseason brawl that we are not seeing Uther from Europe. So, yeah, Brightwing and Dehaka, super global focus on the side of Fnatic already. They showed that at the midseason brawl against Dignitas on the last map on Sky Temple. They really love those comps. But now the Ducks are again putting their eggs into the double support basket. They want to play with the Hyper Carry Vala. They have the Tassadar already for the for the shields, for the life leash, for the support. And they will get a second support with this. They still need, of course, another solo laner here. Illidan is being banned out. That would have been a great addition to their setup. And what do the Ducks get rid of? I like the Odin man. Playing Ducks could have walked into the Illidan and the Rhaegar for their final pickup, and then they had the double support, they could save their Vala, they really enable Illidan, so is this pick the up game? There. What's that? Is this a game? Is this the first game where we don't see Utha? They have the chance to pick it up here. Fnatic I mean, does. Both still. I, I would say that more so the Ducks want him, because they have Stitcher, so after a hook they can just simply Stun. get the shield out. Exactly. Cassia and Aurel, so Brightwing again in the double support role. Brightwing Oriel with a Cassia. And the Ducks. <laughs> Uther. 
Uther and some damage. Yeah. Has to be Uther. Yeah. There's no other choice, but he's really low now. Uther, do we pick up... Medivh would be where with Stitches, right? Oh, Kidnap Combo, yeah. Yeah, I could do Kidnap Combo. Medivh is still floating around. I'm trying to think about support Billy Hero. There's still not a Genji. He's been banned. Uh, Zarya, I mean, they could go all in on the Vala idea. False head's still up too. We've seen that in I mean, the past. You basically need another hero for your turn at this point. So I think there's a good chance that we are going to have a uh, sport really maybe even on the Tassada. But if you go for Eternal, for example, then uh, it's usually one of those solo laners. So yeah. most of the times it's Sonya. Sonya. Rhaegar. No Uther. No it's, Uther. It's the first game in HTC Europe since the mid-season brawl where Uther is not picked. Uther has not a 100% participation ratio anymore. Unless we pick him here. Triple support with Cassia. Just Solo Dahaka. No. <laughs> Battle Uther up at the front. Final pickup here for Fnatic. Probably another warrior. Well, will be on the Dahaka. Do we see the ETC? Murden? They want something with lockdown here for sure. Yeah, you want some stuns. You want some control. Uh, they seem to be going yeah. for a theme of Cassia, Ariel being together, and then the other members can do what they need to do. I mean, after Cassia uses Valkyrie, you need something to lock the target down. Yeah, I agree with you. And you say that in a joking manner, but I say it in a serious manner. Oh, hey, I've seen that before. It's scary, isn't it? Yeah. But I don't think this is necessarily the place. Oh, I guess you could do it. You, you need a strong four-man for it to make it happen. You can roam with the four-man, and you can have another hero that just simply soak. I've seen it in the past with uh, other heroes being played, just like trying to get that side soak, and then you go for attempted isolation. Diva! But they go for Diva at this point. Play to win here. I haven't seen Diva for a couple weeks. Huh. So, fanatic. I like it. I mean, it's, Cassia comp. It's pretty easy. Basically, you move with four, so the Haka gets the side soak. Yeah. Um, okay, you have the Haka on a lane, you have Brightwing on the other lane, the other Rome is three. So once they engage someone, Valkyrie comes in, pushes the targets in, Brightwing jumps in, Diva pushes forward, gets the explosion, and then they kill that target. Sounds like a game winning strat right there. Yeah. That's the future of heroes. It's what I call a trickster strategy. Heroes 2020, man. Yeah. That's the meta. It's coming in. Uh, I do like D.Va against Stitches. I was actually playing this a little bit more uh, in my games as of late. The idea that if someone gets hooked, you're able to Q forward and drop down the uh, defense matrix and able to control anything, especially with that Vala being here. Vala is the only damage for the opposing team. So if you're able to get a defense matrix on that Vala, you can completely dominate. So they'll have to control that Stitches too. Cassia is even better against Stitches because if you Valkyrie in before he hooks, <laughs> yeah. then he can just hook you this far. I'm doesn't, listening. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm you're smiling. Watching. I'm like, tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> in my head, I'm just like, what would Trixler do? He gets victories, man. I'm telling you, sometimes surprise is the best strategy you can possibly have. Looking at the dress, who wins? If, okay, let me put a caveat there. I didn't see the dress from If you yet. don't see Fnatic or playing Ducks, if you don't know the names here, who do you look at and think gets the victory? I think the Ducks have good chances. Yeah. I've only seen D.Va at the mid-season brawl played on this map. I think every time, correct me if I'm wrong, but every time Trick played it, they had it not on this map, and it was before the patch nerfed D.Va. So I'm not sure how much of an impact D.Va is going to have. If you get the explosion in one of the choke points and can really isolate a target or just split a team fight, I think you are in a great spot. But D.Va oftentimes was played that, in against, especially against the... Hyper carry with double support. You yes. would move into the hyper carry, bully them around, try to drop the defense matrix on him. And the problem that arose after Diva got nerfed with a hit point pool is that every time you try to do that, you would be bursted down so fast that you didn't have that impact anymore. That's one of the main reasons why Trick, for example, stopped playing the hero. So Fnatic in this case can show that they have figured it out again. But I think as long as they play well around the Diva and don't get caught in an explosion, the chances of the Ducks to at least get an even game going up pretty good. Well, let's do it. Cursed Hollow, game number two here. We're going to have Fnatic looking to get a 2-0, but the Plain Dokes, they would love to tie it up. Here we go. Game number two, ladies and gentlemen. Fnatic is ahead, and once again to the left, it's the, the Duck. W ducks. With Wolf Joe on Rega, Sport Billy on Tassada, Nanda on Stitches, Chris on Vala, and Eternal on Sonya. Fnatic on the right side in the red. Breeze will be on Diva. Smexy will be on Ario. Wubby will be playing Dahaka. Quatnix on Cassia. And Schwimpy will find it out here with the Brightwing. Now, 
Let's go ahead and watch here. One thing that we do have to talk about, Diva can be great around boss control. Don't be afraid to use her around that boss. Drop down the self-destruct when it comes to a point where someone has to grab the capture point and she can be pretty fierce in that situation. She does have problems on Cursed Hollow with movement though. That's why you're seeing Hit the Nitrous here at level one, being able to boost around the fights and at least try to get to lanes because her movement speed is quite slow. Yeah, I always love when she goes for the boost, like, wee. <laughs> it's a little bit like Asmodan when he was riding the carpet. You remember that when he spreads his, le his yeah. arms out to the left and right? He's like, wee, just like floating around. I love it. Asmodan going full Aladdin, yeah. man. Diva is a little bit like that, so she's having a lot of fun in these situations. But overall, let's see how this is going to work out for Fnatic. I mean, they obviously have a plan here. Go for a Diva de Haka combo with a double support. And a uh, big focus is again on the global, so... It's, it's a really interesting comp. It's one of those things that you've been mentioning earlier. They just have their own meta, and so far it really works. Again, the pressure against, yeah, the hyper carry. But even with all the aggression against Chris, Vala is still kept alive by Sport Billy and also Rhaegar. So no kill. And Stitches in the meantime has been doing some work at the bot lane. And of course to the top, we see a third on his solo. Rhaegar at the same time taking some pressure here in the middle. They've been sitting in the bush as Quiet Nexus Mexi are looking for their best possibility to get near Chris. They want to be in the lane against Zavala. Ariel and uh, Cassio do great actually in 3v2s, but they have a 3v3 here with the Brightwing and will trade out pretty well. They just want to make sure to match them. And Plain Ducks are doing their best to avoid that match. They're rotating as much as possible to get that Vola into different lanes. Yeah, and immediately Fnatic is going for counter rotations. And once again, they're going for a target. This time it's Wolf Joe. Defense Matrix by Breeze is right away used. And they're actually really playing well around the Defense Matrix and also the blinds that we're seeing from Cassia. So Quarknix and Breeze are doing their best to simply shut down Vala. They'll continue to do so. Also to note here, the Vala is going Hungry Arrow. First off, Chris loves this build. He is willing to pull it off wherever he even thinks that it has a chance of being great but also good around those bosses that they will control. Plain Ducks in the first couple weeks of running this battleground in the HEC, they ran this build and they played a style of only working on the macro, going for double boss plays constantly. So Fnatic will have to watch out for that. Yeah, so currently Wubi on the Dehaka is on a 7-0, pretty impressive. Then again, if you look at the uh, overall score for Fnatic, they have only lost three maps in this uh, phase. So three maps out of 12. They're 12 and 3 right now in the map score. 6 and 0, of course. Uh, 18, sorry. 18 and 3. Wow. I'm not a My math bad. major, but that sounds pretty good. Yeah, that's that's pretty okay. Well, they keep over the poke here. We'll see if they can get another victory against the Ducks. So far, playing Ducks have done pretty well. They got the Giants pushing in the top. Sad thing about Giant plays against Double Global is that someone will always be on cleanup duty. And here it's Brightwing as she's in the top lane. Oh. Quagnick's taking pressure though. Yeah, Eternal wanted the kill, if it doesn't get it. Oh, and now all of a sudden it's Sonya who is in trouble. There's Whoopi and the kill. Once again, the Haka just sneaking in for a quick victory. And in the meantime, the Tribute is still up at the bot lane. Breeze working on channeling. He keeps coming down to interrupt Nande because Nande brocks in the slam to make sure to slow him down. He will have a hook up in a second, but Smexy should be able to start channeling too. Breeze dies forward, pushes away Stitches for now, just like a, a little plushy bag. And we're going to see them grab the tribute. After we had already the Stitches pool party, I really think we should have a diva brawl as well where you do nothing else just but boost around and boost people out of your way. Like sumo wrestlers? Wait, what? Sumo wrestlers. Sumo? Have you never heard of sumo? Yeah, of course, but when do they just zip around and push people out of their way? Well, they push each other. They still have the zipping down. I mean, it's a little bit different. It's like basically, you know, the, these car things that you have at any kind of fair, you know? It's like bumper cars. Bumper cars, yeah. Oh, okay. You want bumper cars? Uh, yeah, bumper cars. That'd be a good bra. How did you get from, from, from a mech and from Diva to sumo? My brain By the works way, mysterious ways. I know that. Sonya is down, and that's again Fnatic with an aggressive invade here. That's two kills against zero. They're really starting to shake this up. With all the globals they have, it's it's their biggest strength. It's just them always invading with Breeze moving in. He, has, he can always just simply move out thanks to the mobility of D.Va. And then you have Brightwing and also the Haka moving in. So they steal a camp away. And that's a really annoying spot for their opponent to be in, but it looks like Smexy might actually fall here. He's going in here, drops down the clap and will be taken out. They did grab the tribute. Quite a few stand there and trade out as well, but two kills here as playing Ducks will be able to answer back. 
But again, it's about those tributes. Two out of the three. Yeah, two out of three. And also the camp that is now to the left side soaking not only tower ammunition, but also stopping the waves, which means that this fort that we are seeing over here and the wall in particular is under way more pressure since the waves of Fnatic can simply push in easily. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. Ammunition being drained, pressure onto the towers, and it leaves for Fnatic enough wiggle room to move on other lanes and put pressure on those as well. What I like about the strategy is that D.Va's being used as a jungler, but not as one in terms of the user to move into mercenary camps, but as a person to control space. Look at here, she's already in the bush area, drops in the queue, and anytime she gets in trouble, she can run away herself. If not, she needs to have anyone come in from the global side, whether it be that Brian with a phase shift or, of course, the Dahaka. This allows Fnatic to keep eyes on the map constantly, but also put pressure with the two uh, globals that they have. The Ducks won 10. So you're, you're absolutely right with what you just said about how Breeze is currently using D.Va, but what we are having right now in the game as a situation is the early level 10 for the Ducks, so they should be able to get the tribute here. Fnatic was trying to get that camp fast enough so that they can put them on a clock, because that would be the biggest problem. But now D.Va moving in, trying to get the interrupt. Strafe already being used. Fnatic doesn't have 10 yet. That should be an easy escape on the side of the Ducks. They grab the drag here. Archon will be popped here for the shields. So Sport Billy trying to stay alive. Nandi steps forward and so does the Thurno. <laughs> a hook comes out, but it grabs a minion. Yeah, that gets a minion, but they might even get Quaknik still. There's the 10, and now for the Aegis. Saving Quak for now. And Breeze boosts in to push everyone away. And we have Valkyrie, I told you. Mm. Good job, Kaldor. A plus. Do you I want, know. Do you want a gold star? Here's my imaginary gold star. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy. Valkyrie coming in. And look, it's also Emerald Wind. So if they get a Valkyrie, pull somebody forward, Brightwing can step forward, drop in the Emerald Wind, and they can focus down a target. Or you go in with the Diva and the Self Destruct. That's that too. I yeah. mean, you also look at this. You have the level one and the seven, the nitrous and the knockback. So you have the ability to knock back opposing teams once the Valkyrie comes in and then drop that self destruct. And also, bunny hop, just to be a nuisance and make it hard for the playing ducks to save their teammate. Yeah, Fnatic has basically just like looked at the heroes that exist in the game and they said, what can we possibly do to annoy our opponent the most? And they found a really good answer. So. I want to see how they are playing it around that Valkyrie because, as you said, they can use their Emerald Wind, they can use the Bunny Hop, and they also can use, of course, the Self Destruct here. So there's a lot of tools, and the Stitches that's right next to you can't hook you into the opponent's team. So I want to see how Quack is able to pull off this Valkyrie, and it's a bit of a difficult ability to connect, with, especially on those back lines that you want. It will hit the first target it runs into, so you want to be able to grab those squishies. A Therno charges in, Quack is low on health, Aegis will be popped out. There is a big amount of hope available for Smexi. He brings out the heal. Schwimpy trying his best to kite backwards. Quark is on the run. Eternal, on the other hand, wants the kills, and the ducks are looking strong here. They're looking really good. In comes Breeze. Valkyrie being the used, drag. hitting nothing, actually. And now it's a hard... Oh, Eternal falls still. Gets isolated through Breeze's self-destruct, and now it's a five versus four, but still, will be low, and Fnatic overall is not looking too good when it comes to hit points. That's right, Chris still working on those auto attacks. Chris is low on mana and did go hungry in arrow build, so some of his damage has been reduced. So Quack finally getting topped off by his teammates. Wolves have to chase forward, especially after the Archon duration will finish off. While we'll on the right side doing his best to control, but do remember, Sonya will be back up now. So if they don't grab the tribute soon, this could be a spot where Fnatic does lose out on the trip. Great detainment strike. Great detainment strike that we just saw from Smexy that saves them the curse. The channel goes through. Chris is alive, but Wolf Joe, he might fall. Gets the heal in, but Breeze is stopping him cold and boosts him away from the gate. So that's the kill confirmed. And Fnatic all of a sudden has the curse. They have the five versus four on the map. They're chasing even more heroes. They want Sport Billy, and they're getting him, and not only him. It's also the death of Stitches. That means Fnatic has a talent advantage. They have a five versus two on the map, and they have a curse. They have everything they could dream up for the moment. Already working on the fort in the middle. Breeze will work on the top fort itself. Athernal could be engaged upon. Quatnik still has the uh, Valkyrie. He misses out on it, but it doesn't matter. Wubby gets the drag, and out comes the Fend. They are just so damn good with these. This is, these are oftentimes fights where we look at the fights and we say like, well, if this would have happened, if that would have happened, the fight would have just gone the other way. If the Cassia would have died as she was just barely running away. Damn. If Brightwing would have fallen as Brightwing basically had no hit points left. If before that, the Haka, he could have died twice, but they just don't. And somehow they turn it around and then take the fights. Yeah, with Fnatic, we look at a team and say, that did happen. Yeah. This happened. Exactly. And we give you a result of why they got those kills. Execution Man will always be the number one thing for them, and with them going to the Western Clash, teams there should definitely be scared. 
as Fnatic has just been on point since the midseason brawl. It's all about the boss control now, as we're going to see the playing ducks setting up on the bottom side as they grab their own boss. Dahaka has scouted this out, but I don't think Fnatic will have a chance to even move in and stop it. No, they're a little bit too late on that. It's actually the ducks that take their boss before Fnatic does. They have an insane amount of boss pressure with Sonya, and in particular, of course, Vala, thanks to the build that she's running here. But we still have the two-level lead for Fnatic, and they don't have a talent advantage. It's 13 versus 15 in their favor. They haven't taken a keep yet, but they have eliminated every single fort on the map, and that definitely gives them, from a structural point of view, a definite advantage over the Ducks. The Giant pulled over. Fnatic being denied the Giants for the moment. Boss still keeps moving up. They've decided to go ahead and commit to pushing here. They can have Dahaka come in at any point. Valkyrie is available. So be careful for that. They can pull them on there and get the stun boss in. Here's a Valkyrie actually as it hits Nande. Straight for Nande, trying to go for him. Ancestral comes through and saves him, but he is completely zoned off thanks to the explosion. And Sitch just finds himself on the wrong side of the argument right now, where we have Fnatic pushing in as five. 16 is very close for them, and that boss still has a few hit points left. Yeah, keeps him to stay alive as well. Nande sharks all the way around and comes in for the fight. 16 is about to hit for Fnatic, but still not here. Breeze knocking everyone away. Watch out for the hook. It does connect. He drops down the bunny hop to get away. It's just the best ult in the game. Barely getting away. Just barely. The best ult helping out. The cool thing is it just makes you unstoppable. So it's one of the best things about the heroic ability for sure, because you just can't get, they can't stun you out. So there's nothing that can really happen to you. But he just hops around after he gets pushed in. In the meantime, though, we still had the boss take out the bot for it from or Fnatic. And now they have to deal with a big push in the middle and also a big wave at the bot lane. So that's definitely a few things that work against Fnatic now. One thing that works in their favor is, of course, their global ability that Wubi uses to grab another tribute without any contestion. One more tribute. Many ways clean up in the middle. Fnatic doesn't have to deal with the boss in the bottom as it was dealt by the uh, turrets that were left over. And of course, we'll be starting there with the Haka. And now it's all about waiting around for the next couple of turrets. In terms of bosses spawning, it's going to be a couple minutes for them to spawn. Let's go ahead and check it out. It's going to be two minutes, three minutes actually on the top right boss. So there is a chance for playing Ducks to make a comeback here. Get their 16 and try and force a fight. Yeah, so in this situation right now, we have still as you said, they need the 16, and they still have a couple of chances to make these plays. Fnatic has eight kills against three, but the Ducks had a lot of team fights that were extremely close, and if they just can keep their heroes alive a bit longer, get that one additional shield in from Tassada, this could flip everything in their favor. And since they haven't lost the keep yet, they have very good chances of beating Fnatic then later on. So far, the attempts that we seen from Fnatic with Valkyrie were actually quite nice. So they go for what we expected to see. They go into a Valkyrie and then immediately they drop on D.Va to self-destruct and try to zone or they use Brightwing with the Emerald Wind. But the Darks have played nicely around it with quick Ancestrals that Rega was dropping out there to try and save the target. Their biggest problem was then that the the wedge that was driven into the team and their coordination because of the self destruct that D.Va is using here. But if they can just set that up for a normal team fight, they should have a good shot here, and this could be it right here. Poor Billy has a Oracle, will be <gasps> able. Oh my gosh, the yes. blink heal. That was close. Fnatic is setting up for the second tribute. Already, we see playing Ducks deciding to give it up. They're going to rush yeah. down the bottom left. They were in a bad spot. They're in a really bad spot. If they fight in that particular choke point, then uh, Fnatic can just take them apart with a good self destructor of Valkyrie here and even Emerald Wind being used. So they just simply let it slide. We're a bit too slow to rotate towards the tribute position. But overall, they still have the tools that can uh, make it difficult for Fnatic. But of course, Fnatic now a level ahead, doing well, opening up the map. But both of the teams have lost all their forts. So it's not only the Ducks that have suffered structural damage. Nande may have gotten caught. Quenix comes in. He has a Valkyrie. Does miss out on it because of cleanse from Wolf Joe. Bunny Hop will slow down Nande for now, but he's popping to Bile, and there's going to be a hook on Wubby. Dahaka is taken. Here comes the self destruct. Wubby is not able to drag someone in. So that's a lot of tools used on the side of Fnatic now, and they are trying to slow down Wubby with a Pulverize being used once more. Breeze jumps in, tries to help him out. Eternal attempting to close in. Hook connects, and Breeze in a bit of trouble. Blind not hitting anything. Breeze still low, gets healed, but will eventually drop out. No boosts away as Mexi saves the retreat with a quick Emerald Wind, but Brightwing herself, not so lucky. 
Can Schwimpy, does he have a blink kill? No, he doesn't. And Brightwing will fall in the plane. Ducks are going to start chasing here. Can they grab Quatnix here with the spear? They miss out on it. Quax is low on health. He's turning around to do his own fight, and he gets picked up. And Fnatic with two people down. The Ducks are starting to charge forward. Yeah, it's a ducking disaster for Fnatic at this point as we are seeing the playing Ducks move in, dropping an Aureal, hooking Breeze, and that is good by D.Va. It's a quad kill. We see to the top lane, Tassada now fighting with Wubi, and the only thing that he has to do is prevent the curse, but he doesn't even care. They want to finish the game. They actually are trying to finish the game right here. They're pushing for it. 20 seconds before we even have the Cassie on the field. 10 seconds for the Brightwing. Brightwing will have Emerald win as well. This could be close. Chris starting to auto-attack the core, going straight on in. Uh-oh, two seconds and the Brightwing is back. Emerald Wind is ready. They can use the Emerald Wind here to push them off the core and buy a little bit more time, which is exactly what they're going to try and do, but the core is already down to 25 to 20 percent. Here comes the Ancestral. No way! The Ducks are taking it! They win the second map against Fnatic and take the victory on Cursed Hollow. Wow, impressively done here by the Playing Ducks. Looks like Fnatic messed up there in the bottom right corner. The Playing Ducks, they'll take any opportunity they can. They go in, get a kill, pick up Quatnix, and of course push forward and grab the core. They tie up the series. That was only the fourth map that has been lost by Fnatic in Phase 2 of the HGC. So that was pretty impressive there. Because you have to keep in mind, for Fnatic, of course, they are 6-0 in the standings, mm -hmm. but the maps that you win, they matter. Think about all the potential tiebreaker situations we went through when we were talking about Dignitas, Team Liquid, Experts, and Tricked. Those hinge on the map score. And Fnatic is already qualified for the Western Clash, of course. But they are already having their eyes on the prize, which is BlizzCon. So they want to go to BlizzCon. So every map they lose hurts them. Well, wow. it's going to be it here. We're tied up one to one. We'll get ready for game number three. Will Fnatic come into angry Fnatic or will the playing Ducks keep sewing forward?